Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the scope. And now, here are your hosts, Jared, Adam, and Shane. everybody episode 204 of the scope the crowd is happy we are back oh man i totally misread the audience you did turn on you quick they're all over the place bitches adam i love your shirt thank you makes perfect sense for you did you get that at meth.com i did I, it was a free gift for very mediocre person their five dollar a month free shipping uh subscription well, that was weird at meth.com at meth jared's com. already there meh. I well, go there every once in a while. It's supposed to be like what you what Woot used to be before yeah. Amazon bought them. Did it's the Amazon guys. Buy it's, them? Yeah, it's I the bought guys. something at Woot recently. Yeah, you did. I bought a 4K monitor. How is it? It's awesome. It's That's ridiculously awesome. It's awesome. It's even better once I showed up. Yeah, Jared's and, like, "Oh, and, Shane, you're an idiot. You, know, you, you, <laughs> you have no have idea." Setup, right. I'm like, "My windows are this big, oh, yeah, and it doesn't really look great." Is that and, weird? And he's like, "Click," and then ah, it was like looking at my Retina screen, and life was good. Nice. I'm on the path to 4K myself. I, I've gotten the video card, the necessary video card update for yeah. my machine, and now I'm just have to wait until I'm ready to buy the monitor. Jared saw the monitor. He soiled himself right there in my <laughs> office and said, "I think that I need to get one of these." You have the Samsung one. I'm I'm looking at the Mono Price one. Apparently, they're the same panel. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. Uh, it's like it's there's only that, like one company that actually makes the, yeah. the all those yeah, panels. Right, anyway. all, the, all the 28 inch ones are pretty much the same panel, but I mean, the circuitry that drives it is different. So different results but. i mean it's it's an, as impressive an upgrade for me as it was when i got my new macbook pro retina that was so much faster and blah 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 but the thing is i always work with that in clamshell mode down whatever so i'm just plugging it into a monitor so i don't i never really got the benefit of that beautiful screen yeah uh, and i don't like sit on my couch and type on it i'm using my usually on my ipad so getting this monitor was like the natural progression and maybe how it should have been when i got that that retina Nice. And, uh, That's exciting. It, yeah, it was really, really nice. So it's a great deal on Woot. Go to Woot.com, I guess. Meh. <laughs> or meh. Guys, uh, this is going to be a bit of a sad show today. It's a show of remembrance. Yeah, it is. Uh, Jared and I recently found out that the place of employment that essentially created our entire adult life social circle. This show exists because of because of, of that place. It absolutely does. I could have been on a better podcast if uh, mm -hmm. Toys R Us had not. Sorry. Oh, you spoiled it! <laughs> you ruined it! Yes, indeed. TRU. Yes, our former uh, workplace where many of our friends met. Uh, I met my wife through this store in a roundabout way. Mm -hmm. we, this podcast was created. Some of my lo most long-term, most cherished friendships were created and bonded because of my time working at a little toys toy store called Toys R Us. Um, it opened in 1989 here in Minneapolis, hmm. and uh, okay. it will be buried... It is buried. It is gone in 2015. So Jared and I are going to spend a little bit of time talking about our time, I guess using time in a sentence a lot, uh, we're, about our time there, uh, some memories maybe that we haven't shared or maybe memories we have. And I have a few Toys R Us trivia questions okay. as well. Fun. And I'll talk about the uh, couple years I spent working at Chesapeake Bagel Bakery in Springfield, Virginia. Wow. Well, not, we've, not there anymore. It's a Maggie Moos now. Well, we've heard that. Maggie Moos. Maggie Moos. So let's take a quick break. And we'll be back with more of episode 204 and a eulogy for a fallen store right after this. This is the phone. At Amazon.com where I bought my mom Some Woodstock wind shines She was so happy as she went and bought me A weed belly cookbook all 50 pounds And a much smaller man boobs now Amazon.com Hey, give me that old Skepticism, give me that logical positivism, dialectical materialism is good enough for me. One, do the thing. Two, do the thing again. Three, do another thing. Four, go, go, go! That's the Funny Music Project at thefump.com. T H E F U M P.com. Thank you. 
we are back. Yes, that was the uh, theme to Toys R Us. Yes, they had a theme circa about 1989. As Jared had pointed out to me, it was like the kid and play version where <laughs> you had the orchestra hit. I mean, any sort of <laughs> synthesizer <laughs> sound effect that people used, it was right in there. And so bad. And they used that theme, boy, uh, probably pretty close to our entire time there. It did not yeah. really change that much. Did Jeffrey have like a backwards hat at the time and stuff too? Yeah, I don't know if he had. There was that. A, I know at some point there was more of a, a, a hip hop, hip marketing where yeah. they kind of made him a little bit more kid friendly, edgy. I don't know. Yeah. But no. Yeah. So, <laughs> so yes, as we talked about in the A block, <laughs> Toys R Us <laughs> is closed. Uh, I started working at our local Toys R Us in 1990. It was the second real job I ever had. As of I could not as, drive when I got a job there. So That's a, how young I was. As of this episode being out, the store is closed. Is it as of the recording? Is it officially closed? April nineteenth is the last but it day. Effectively, it might it, as well be. It is closed. Yeah. Oh, definitely it was closed. There. Yeah. Um, I was there just a couple of weeks ago and almost the entire store was roped off. They just had merchandise right in the front and in the back people were demolishing, taking Crying. Out. What do they have left at this point? Um when I was there and I did actually buy a couple of things, believe it or not, they had some Xbox 360 games. Really? They had a few video games there. They had a, still a bunch of like Skylander sets. Did you still? And they have had to... Marvel Infinity sets that I bought, or a couple of figures. So I bought Audrey a couple of, of Marvel Infinities. Did for... you still have to like take the piece of paper to the security? No, they haven't. Do... They really it. have not done that. Okay, for, for a long years time. actually. That that system. My right main away. memory of Toys yeah. R Us. Well, we can get into that because that was my job when I worked there. Oh. Um, so yeah, they were they're closing down. Uh, uh, I think it was more an issue of the store not wanting to sign another long-term lease. And as we were talking about it off-air, um, things like brick-and-mortar stores that are these giant warehouse-type stores, Walmart, Target has killed a lot of their business, as well as people just buying stuff online as well. So Amazon is definitely a part of that. Sure. Uh, Toys R Us, just too expensive and a bit, you know, for a time, they were pretty cutting edge in terms of how they built their stores. I mean, they... I was watching, believe it or not, like an old video that I'm going to post on our Toys R Us uh, Ooh, Facebook page. Cool. But it was a story from 1989 from NBC, and they were interviewing the the owner of Toys R Us or the creator of it. And he talked about how... John Toys R Us. John Toys R Us. It's very, very workable last name. <laughs> mm -hmm. About how they he built it to be like a grocery store where you could go in up and down these aisles and just have as much choice as you wanted uh, compared to the old days in the 50s and 60s and 70s where toy stores would have toys behind glass. Um, you, if you wanted to see a doll, they would take it out of the case and let you hold it and touch it. You, But you weren't, you know, actively interacting with this. If they were out of something, they would have to order it for you and get it for you a few a few days later. Yeah. Toys R Us completely blew that model up by just having everything, having 20,000 different, different uh, items in the store. Hmm. And you could just have your pick of anything. And by doing that, they could have respectably uh, uh, decent prices even though I always found that their prices were more yeah. than the average store. Which came first, Toys R Us or Children's Palace? Um, I would say in the history of toys, it probably was Toys R Us. Okay. So and I'll get into a little bit of that history hmm. with our Toys R Us trivia. Maybe I'll maybe we'll do some Toys R Us trivia real fast, and then uh, Jared and I can tell us tell some stories about uh, our favorite and maybe least favorite times at Toys R Us. So. My question number one is, who founded Toys R Us? Do you guys have any idea? Jared? Oh, geez. Jared would probably know if is it like I a, said it. a well-known? Um, if you work for Toys R Us, it probably oh, okay. would. I mean, I knew at one point. I don't know. I don't The know. name is Charles Lazarus. Yep. Correct. Oh, the and, inventor of the Lazarus machine. Yeah, of course. And what year did uh, Mr. Lazarus open his first toy store? Was it 1938, 1948, 1958, or 1968? I'm gonna go 58. I'll just go different. I'll go 68. Uh, the correct answer is 1948. Wow. And he didn't open his original store that he opened in New York was not a Toys R Us store. That uh, that name came later. Hmm. But let me read the original names that mm -hmm. it could have been, and I'll let you guys try to guess. Was the original name Child World, Kids Mart, Children's Supermart, or Toy Planet? I'll go with. Children's supermarket. I, I, that's what I'm leaning towards because you talked about him wanting to have the supermarket. Or maybe that. Children's supermarket. We'll go with it. It's correct. Children's supermarket was the name of the original version of Toys R Us. Um, Terrible name. And guess what? Jeffrey, <laughs> Jeffrey the Giraffe, we talked about, was the original mascot. Yeah. But what was his original name? It was not Jeffrey. Mm. Was the name Dr. G. Raff, <laughs> Johnny Giraffe, Senior Giraffo, 
or Heinz T. Giraffe? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I'm going to go with Heinz T. Giraffe. Okay, uh, and, that's my guess. And the second one's too obvious, so I'm going to go with the doctor one. Dr. Giraffe yeah. is correct. <laughs> it's not C, It's not Johnny Giraffe or Senior Giraffo. <laughs> <laughs> I thought Heinz T. Giraffe was a great name. So here's a story behind Gira- Jeffrey. He was a mascot for another toy company or toy store called the Children's Bargain Town. What kind of names are they having? This is this is Come late. on down to Children's Bargain Town where the, the children are cheap and the toys are cheaper. And, and this was this was a late like a late 50s early 60s toy store and they eventually bought um they bought Toys R Us and eventually they bought Toys R Us which was actually the Chil- Children's Supermart <laughs> and eventually rebranded their stores they're all the stores to a t- Toys R Us in 1967. So that's sort of when the what you know as Toys R Us came to be, where they had you know like striped colored roofs and like that, that terrible brown color, and then with like the supermarket. What type year of did stuff. they reverse the R? <laughs> I think it was right away. And hmm. and Toys R Us came from the giraffe. He would say that that would be the slogan. So it would be like Children's Supermart. He would say Toys R Us. Okay. That's what he would say. So so that name actually transformed into the name of the company a little bit later on. Okay. Um, and here's an easy one, you guys. Toys R Us bought what upscale toy store in 2009? Oh, did they buy FAO Schwartz? They did. Huh. Oh, yeah, yeah, So yeah. they bought FAO Schwartz. And then they all closed. Yeah, so they... <laughs> and by that time, Toys R Us was probably struggling. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they, they were even struggling when we were there. They were. Um, it just... Is KB still around? KB's out of business. They're but out I, of business, too. Okay. So I think Toys R Us either bought KB or sort of moved into some of their spots. So there would be like these pop-up KB slash Toys R Us stores, or maybe they were just pop-up toy store, Toys R Us stores in malls. Yeah. You know? But just, you don't, kids, number one, kids don't play with toys as long as they used to. I yeah. mean, I played with toys up until sixth grade, and I probably could have done long, done it longer, but once you get into junior high, that's not cool. Audrey stopped playing with toys like a year or two ago. I mean, regularly. She just is not interested in that, and that trend has continued for boys and play, girls. She, like iPad electronics, and okay. or Video you know, game, she'll yeah. just do other things. Just she start just, working just, in the coal mine. Yeah, and, <laughs> and not a lot of her friends play with toys either. Huh. So I think that that's just been a trend that electronics takes more of the business away, and a yeah. place like Toys R Us just isn't isn't successful because of that. Let me ask you a question, please. Do uh, while you ask, I'm going to go and do something real quick. All right. Uh oh. Do your do, does your kid have a power wheel? She never had a power wheel. Okay. Does her do her friends? Um, they may have when they were kids, okay. but yeah. Uh, we were talking about this because uh, Target sells like Mercedes Benz, yes. uh, you know, Corvette uh, power wheels. And I remember as a kid, and and I was talking to my coworkers, and they're like, "Yeah, I bought one for my kid. They're less expensive to these days, yeah. or whatever." I remember as a kid, that was like the prestige sure. toy to have. So back in the day, and I can tell you, in the late or mid, early to mid nineties. Power wheels were very popular, mm-hmm. and the cheapest one you could get that would be, you know, of the normal size would be about two hundred dollars. But okay. really, they were three to four, you know, two hundred to four hundred dollars. Right. And where a bike it, is probably seventy bucks. Yeah, I mean, Toys R Us, right? I mean, like a hundred dollars for a bike okay. back in those days. So that was a lot of money back then, yeah. and that was 20, 30 years ago. Right. So yeah, I mean, to get something like that would have been a pipe dream. Okay, for me as a kid, but and I, today they're the same price as those but money it's you know yeah there's more money just the around. cost probably hasn't gone up we're talking about power wheels right now jared speaking of power wheels if you watch that commercial that we played the audio for yes they say something about big or the biggest toy store or something like that mm-hmm. and the image on screen is this poor little fat kid climbing out of his power wheels. <laughs> yeah, it's like, i'm like some editor did that <laughs> and that was just me this is like a joke <laughs> so jared let me ask you some quick questions yeah. um did you ever steal anything from Toys R Us? You can come clean. Confession. No, no I did not. Um, did I, you? So so I have a... Yes, I would say technically I stole something, uh-huh. but not... It wasn't, I just stole Jim Osterman's pride by uh, when we played Street Fighter 2 and I laid down a 360 Zangief pile driver on him. <laughs> One of my favorite stories ever. So... <laughs> So um, when I was working at Toys R Us, the the height of like the collectible cards, baseball, comic books, were at at a fever pitch. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And one of the the starting lineups was that part of it too. Yeah, I was sort of in that. Like collectibles in general yeah. were were quite big. But one of the things that I collected along with comic books were uh, they had a they had a line of Marvel cards. So they did like Marvel Universe, but then they did an X Men Universe, and all these cards were drawn by Jim Lee, who mm-hmm. is by far the most 
famous guy to ever draw X Men. Mm -hmm. He's now is the big shot at DC Comics. But I he had a, I have those cards he, in a box somewhere back he, there. He had a full line of those cards, and back in the day, and maybe maybe to this day, they still do it the same way. But they weren't mixed very well. So to get certain cards, you essentially had to get the one out of every ten packs in there. Uh, to get like two or three certain cards. Otherwise, you're just going to get the same ones over and over again. And I was missing like three cards. So at Toys R Us, they had an area called, I think it was just the rewrap area, Jared. Is that what it was called? Yeah, I think it was, so. It was in the back. So yeah. what people would do would, would open stuff and look at it and they just throw it down. So it was our job to collect that stuff and collect the pieces and eventually put it back together. Yeah, or you get returns where it was yep. not, and then you not well. Yeah, yeah, you'd, you'd either apart, whatever. You'd either could resell it, or you'd have to send it back to the manufacturer. And a lot of times, you'd get cards that were ripped open and stuff like that. Well, I was bringing stuff back there, and there were there were cards, and they happened to have like the three X Men <laughs> cards that I needed, and I was not in charge of that stuff. And I think there was a manager back there, and I'm like, "Hey, could you rewrap this and mark them down for me, in a, or whatever?" And I'll just buy them. And he's like, "Just take them." So I took the three cards. All right, nice. So that's my stolen my stolen circle. And uh, was one of them a cyclops? <laughs> it was probably not. A, I think it was a cyclops. <laughs> Whoa, there's three apparently. Stop, <laughs> Jared. Yeah. What's the most hours you ever worked during a week of Christmas? Oh boy. Did you ever work eighty hours in a week? I don't know if I ever hit eighty, but I was probably over sixty for sure. Yeah. I yeah. feel like my highest probably had to be between sixty-five and seventy hours. Did you guys work full time? Well, is here's it, was this yeah, year? yeah. So here's okay. the thing. Well, yeah, well, for a while there. Uh, if you, I didn't, I didn't work those kind of hours in high school, but in college, I had a month off, so yeah. I would, you know, take my finals in like the, it'd be like January or December 10th, and then I'd be done, and so then I'd have two solid weeks of Toys R Us where I could work as many hours as I could possibly fit me. So a lot of times I would work easy 50 hours, mm -hmm. but sometimes it would go up to 65, maybe 70, but... Well, yeah, and you got time and a half of the overtime. Yeah, so, so if you worked over, if you worked overtime and you worked in the overnight shift, which you got an extra dollar, you could make some pretty good money yep. for that time. And then, then it would be over like January 1st, and then I would have like a week or two that I could work regular hours because Toys R Us didn't need you to work those kind of hours, and then yep. I would go back to school. Yeah. Yeah, I was... Uh... During the holidays, more often I, there was one season where I worked overnights, but then I was I was in the front end for most. Yeah, they of wouldn't it. let you. Some people they would not they wouldn't let all the good people work overnights because they wanted yeah they wanted capable employees. My overnights yeah. happened later in my my tenure there, just because at that point I was sort of fed up with dealing with people during yeah. the holiday rush. But you get tired of it. Yeah, yeah. I can remember being there and just having. I mean, we have twelve or thirteen registers. They would all be open. Yeah, and people would be stacked up. All the way back into the aisles, and it was great because you couldn't go any further than yeah, that. Yeah, and and even the customers were like, "Well, it is what it is." Yeah, you know, we had Christmas. We had some days so busy during Christmas, which I don't think that they've they they have this anymore. No, okay? or they, I think that's part of the reason why they're going out of business. But you would have every lane packed. You would have you know ten people in line going back into the store waiting to get out. And the only way someone could get out of the store would be to backtrack and go out the entrance door because there you physically could not get yeah. through the aisles if you were and the for, lanes to leave through the exit. If for door. whatever reason you decided you weren't going to make a purchase that day and you needed to leave, that was the yeah. only way to get out. <laughs> so, so like we would do things during Christmas where people couldn't leave the store, and I remember very clearly one Christmas season where I bundled. It was probably you know like twenty below. I bundled up into essentially like the snowsuit from a Christmas story. And <laughs> one of the man, cause you weren't supposed to do this. One of the managers opened the back door and I collected all sorts of money from all the employees. I ran across the parking lot over to Wendy's, got a bunch of food and brought it back for everybody <laughs> for their order. Like a serious, like running through the winter to the Arctic tundra. Wow. So it's because you couldn't go out the, you could not go out the front door. It was crazy. Mm -hmm. And now I, I think that those days of Toys R Us, even if they weren't closing are long gone. I mean, it, Maybe on Black Friday you would get something to yeah. that degree, but you would have days like the weekend before Christmas yep. where it would be Insane. utter insanity. We probably, Nothing like I'd never seen. We probably worked there during the peak of yes. Toys R Us's popularity yeah. and then started witnessing its decline. So. Yeah. AOL Absolutely. keyword Toys R Us uh, stole all those customers. So. Yes. Exactly. Jared, so what's, what was the best part of working at Toys R Us for you? Oh, it has to definitely be the the... The people. The connection that you yeah. made. Yeah. I mean, you and I and, and a whole bunch of our friends, we all met there. Yeah. You know, Earl, I met there. Um, Chris Maynard, Mike Craven, yeah. Jeff Dean. All of our all of our, our good good friends, yeah. we met there for the most part. Yeah. Um, I, it was weird for me because, you know, I was clo very close with my high school friends. But once college came, I 
really sort of fell out of out of touch with most of them and all of my all of my good friends from now uh, with the exception of you Adam and that's borderline of good friends but uh, <laughs> seriously come from Toys I mean, R Us the people that... that I hang out socially that is not involved in this podcast yeah. probably revolve around Toys R Us I would say about 90% of the people that are in my yeah, life yeah if not directly then somehow tangentially yes for sure absolutely so and what was the worst did you guys get a discount oh. No, no, that, that people that's always thought we had a discount. We never did. What? No, yeah, no. We never. They, I think they eventually did implement one later. Wow. I hear uh, they had one like before we started there. Or at least, at least before I started, they had a discount. Well, but they, then by the time I started there in '92, no discount. Well, I think that's false because okay. because that store they started building it in fall of fall or maybe even summer of '89. I started working there in the summer of '90. So if they had a discount, it was gone. Yeah, it may not have even been that store. Yeah. It may have been just in the company in yeah. general. But yeah, there what, was no discount. What they would have, Adam, is that uh, one day, maybe like be- right before uh, Thanksgiving, mm-hmm. they would have an employee shopping night on a Sunday. Oh, that's right. Where they, where they would keep the store, it would always close at 6 o'clock on Sundays, and they would keep the store up until 8. And they would let you go and shop without the tethers of other people there. <laughs> and then they would they would have like a, a, a lottery where you might they would draw for ten dollars worth of Jeffrey dollars, which was essentially their gift cards. Yeah, yeah. Their t- their their tender, their currency, mm-hmm. and their store you, credit. M- you might get that. And I think at the end of the night, maybe they would give away a fifty or a hundred. And I don't I don't even think they did that regularly. That might have been a later thing. Yeah, and, I mean seriously, you got nothing. The, you just got to be in the store, and it, and it wasn't like the store was completely restocked with all the good stuff. It was just the was store what, on a Sunday night what, after a busy week. Whatever was left on a <laughs> yep. Sunday. Like this is crazy, and maybe they got pizza. I don't even know if they did that. No, I like like a party sub or something. You'd fight for it. <laughs> but I mean, if you're t- if you're 19 years old, that's what you do. Right. Whatever. I so mean, even I like the bagel bakery. I got a free bagel every. I know. Every shift. You couldn't even get that. <laughs> yeah, maybe if they if some they, free pop rocks well, every shift. So what they would do is like they would have old food. Maybe you you like old candy and stuff or old juice boxes that they have to get away give away. Maybe you could steal those or take <laughs> yeah. those out of the garbage can. <laughs> and they, they, they wouldn't they wouldn't give that to the employees. Have some lightly expired juicy juice. <laughs> <Enjoy>. Exactly <laughs> what it was. <laughs> and the worst thing working at Toys R Us, Jared. Yeah, this job would be great if it wasn't for all the people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Uh, probably the worst part was some of the collector people that would come in. Sure. Whether it be starting lineup people or Star Wars people or Barbie people, there was all these little subgroups of collectors who would I I don't know some They just be there. They would just be there They'd in the morning there in the right morning, when you open waiting. waiting for you to put stuff out, following you around, asking you, calling you know, and you're just like, no, nothing, nothing coming in. Yeah. Even and, if it was coming in, you there's no way in hell you would tell and them. And at some point, and at some point, you know, there was a while there where we didn't know what was coming on our trucks. A truck would just show up. We knew when it was coming, but we didn't yep. know what was on it. And then at some point, they started adding this whole manifesting thing where we got to manifest in advance. And it would print out on a dot matrix yep. printer. But we knew it was coming. But at some point, somebody tipped it off to the collector types that this system was in place. Because now they started asking, well, can you check your manifest and see what's coming in? Former uh, employee. Yeah. We never did. It was one more, one new employee hire at the Burnsville store down the road that probably, oh, we have a manifest. We can check that <laughs> stuff. And then it spreads like wildfire. Burnsville. So for me, it would be the, anyone who yeah. was uh, interested in collectibles. Oh, I forgot forgot about the Hot Wheels guys. Yeah. You'd get a box. Of these They're Hot still Wheels, around, by the Hot way. These Hot Wheels would come in a box of 100. Yeah. T- and t- they t- would t- want their one special chase car they're going after. Weirdos. Yeah. <laughs> and they would dig through that box. And then, those people are, are collecting Amiibos everywhere. today. They're what? The, those people are the ones collecting amiibos. I know today. it's insane. Yeah, I think th- in general, Jared, we forget about the mundaneness, if that's a word, of sure. working there. Because as you get older, just in general, when you think back on your memories, it's always the good stuff you remember, and the bad stuff sort of fades. Yeah. I mean, if we were to go back to that day, you know, forty-year-old Jared, forty-year-old Shane, and work there, I think that we'd probably be pretty tired of it. I mean, yeah. I mean, how exciting week. is it stocking? Yeah. Stocking stuff, yeah. you know. I mean, at least at least for the most part, by the end of my run, I was pretty much exclusively stocking and maintaining the action figure aisles. Yeah. Because for some reason, I somehow worked that out, that that was going to be my thing and everyone else could do the rest of the store. <laughs> but, That's right. I mean, it's still, you're putting stuff on a peg, you're putting boxes on a shelf, you're putting overstock up on the overstock shelves. So there's a lot of climbing the ladder. I don't know. It's just mm-hmm. all stuff that you can't take out and play with yourself. Right. That yeah. seems like it'd be hard. We yeah. did. Uh, we did. That was one sort of perk. We didn't have a... Um, a discount, but we did have a pretty liberal hold policy. Yeah, like we'd all have stashes of things that we'd. Sometimes it's like our, you know, Earl who'd be on who's been on the show many times. He'd have a giant stack of stuff. 
I think, and then another guy that used to work there, he would have stuff. Mm -hmm. And I think that years later they found things hidden under because I think he left. Uh -huh. He left quickly. Yeah, and uh, they would just find like weird things pop up. And you you'll read stories about that too. Like, oh, I was at Target, and all of a sudden there's an action figure there that's ten years old. You know, sitting on the shelf, and that's probably because they moved moved like a base shelf and opened it up, and somebody had stuck something in there, and they just hadn't moved the shelves in 10 years. So, yeah. Ooh. So, Brown out. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I, to me, I think the, the best part of Toys R Us was, you know, maybe the, the interaction with the people and maybe the, even the stuff outside of the store that you would do that you would look forward to after you were sure. leaving the job. The job itself, it was always fun. I mean, I have to say, Adam, that working at, working at Toys R Us in the video game section during the height of the Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis battle was a lot of fun because they sold so many video games mm -hmm. and it was just at a fever pitch where yeah. people would come in that I thought I found that to be really really exciting if from a retailing experience because you sort of knew like you were in for something good and y in a way you could almost direct what people people say well, what should I buy and you know your biases could kind you of were come in you were a product expert you were a product expert so <laughs> I think I think one of my takeaways from my time with Toys R Us is that I that that's any improvisational skills that I have now were were honed and and begun during that period. Whether it yep. was just having to deal with customers and like you get called to the the stroller aisle, yeah. And you we know nothing. I about don't know strollers. nothing about strollers, but you're going to be there and you're going to be a product expert to these pe poor people who are trying to pick out yep. a stroller. And somehow I figured I was I was good at just winging it and basically reading to them the point of purchase sign. The POPs, that's <laughs> what they call them. And so, well, this has got this and this and this, and we, that's what you really want. This one doesn't have that, you know. And it was all complete bullshit. Jared, it's it, got more bullets. It, it was like we were, and that's actually not far off, but yeah. it, was, it was like we were presidential candidates reading off the teleprompter. Yeah. We saw it there, but we had to look <laughs> over here to make them believe that we knew what we were talking about. And more often than not, yeah, we did all right. Yeah, it was all about being confident. And then we would, I, for some reason, I think whose line was a big thing at the time too. Uh, we would have these, you know, parties and gatherings uh, outside of work, and we would do a lot of improv. We would sort of would we? <laughs> Not a lot, but I can re <laughs> I, I can remember, remember a couple times where I was not like, at these parties. No, it was like you and me and Alan. We would just sort of oh, sure. we would just play. We'd riff. We would do our we would riff on some of like the the type of games that they would do on whose line. I'm not saying it was any good. I don't remember. It, I don't remember that, but it sounds familiar. I would just say it would happen. So that was sort of my introduction to just sort of riffing and improvisation and stuff like that. So Jared and I always had an idea that we wanted to have a party one day where people would come into the party and it would be set up like a talk show, sort of like the Seinfeld episode. And we just, is, hey, Adam, have a seat at our couch. And then we would just interview like it'd be a party. Maybe that, maybe that came out of that idea. I don't maybe. Know. So yeah, it was, it was a good time. I'm sad that it's closing, but mm -hmm. the reality is, is that I. You know, since Audrey stopped playing with toys, I probably go in there once a year. I was telling Jared that a friend of ours actually went back and he worked there part time. So I feel worse for him because he's losing a job and mm -hmm. he's sort of been through this whole process of watching this store be demolished. So I think I think it'd be harder if you were in it. Yeah. Did you guys read the AV Club oral history of the Nickelodeon toy run? I, I did, and I posted that on our, our Toys R Us group. I still okay. have to get to yeah, it. Yeah, it's a great story. You should absolutely so read it. So one of the kids mentions that the toy runs, I think it was KB. Like They used to do them in Minneapolis at the Mall, the Mall of America. Of America. Which, was that the KB that they did they that? Had, they had a fairly decent-sized toy store there for okay. a while. There was an FAO Schwartz there, too. Yeah, but... It just I don't know how they could do a great toy run, yeah. right? So okay. yeah, I was I was. I think they had a place called Toy World there for a while. Oh, maybe they did. But it was like it wasn't connected to anybody. But that was not part of that story. Okay. No, uh, yeah. they mentioned like they're like the kid that went to Hawaii. Yeah. He was like it's it was weird. Like, normally it's the Mall of America. Yeah, I, I just couldn't think of what store it was. So, and, so when the Mall of America, that. this will be the last story, and then we'll move on because I gotta cut this short. But uh, Toys R Us. There was a lot of talk of getting Toys R Us into the Mall of America when it opened. I mean, to, to the point where it was really, really close to happening. Uh, the problem was is they could not, because they, they go through so much merchandise, that they could not have the access to the loading docks, I guess, and the elevators to get all that that uh, mm. stuff yeah. in and out of there. That would have been a nightmare. Yeah. I think I think if Toys R Us would have moved into Mall of America, it probably would have closed much earlier, and then you just wouldn't have had a Toys R Us. So I think for our store location, that the best thing that, could have happened was that they just didn't go into the Mall of America because it was right down the road. They would have closed that one and, you know, 
as as all stores do in the Mall of America, things close. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. just the way it is. That's the nature of that business. Mm-hmm. So before we wrap up the Toys R Us segment, uh, I just have a, a physical item I'd like to share okay. briefly with our audience. Um, when I was going through some stuff in my basement a couple years ago, trying to get rid of stuff, clean mm-hmm. up, um, I came across some little mementos from my okay. time at Toys R Us. I have not one, but three Toys R Us customer service awards. <sighs> In my possession, Jared, would you would you be a doll and take a picture of those and put that on our Facebook group? Because I, I could think, do that because I think people would appreciate that. I have my three customer uh, service award pins, and these came about like you actually had to have like some sort of special, like somebody had to write a letter in and yep. say, "I did a very spectacular job in a very particular case," and wow. they would, you would get a customer service award. I've got three. I'm a sweet so, Pete. I'm like the Michael Jordan of customer service awards. Towards the end of my tenure there. <laughs> You would you start to get very brazen and whatever like you know you've been there a long time right I mean for you're a, untouchable for a while you're not gonna, for a, no. for a, seriously for a while I was the longest tenured guy there and so you would get so brave that you know if you did a good job for someone mm-hmm. and they sort of pointed out you'd say hey, you know what we have these things called customer service pin word <laughs> and we we get stuff out of it would you would you be a dear and write me a letter or something I mean it's not like you write an email <laughs> yeah and some I think it actually paid off for me a couple of times yeah. where you got people to write you a letter so wow. So there we go, Jared. Yeah. Toys R Us, rest in peace, 1989 to 2015. We'll miss you, but you'll never be forgotten. Hmm. <laughs> Let's take a break. We'll be back right after this. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the scope. Under the, under, under, under the scope. Right, Adam. All right. It's Whoa. coming soon. <laughs> all right. You're all, uh, uh, where am I? Hold on. You jumped on that real fast. Here we go. My wife is going to be <laughs> champing at the bits. All right. We've got new music from go. Blur. Go. Their new album. No time. New. Go. <laughs> I've heard their song, Rayquan. but not bad. There's a band. I can't pronounce their name, but their genre is folk metal. Let me see the name. Chumba Wumba? It's close. <laughs> Cor- <Cor-Placani. laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> Movies. We've got Far From the Madden Crowd. Mad- what? G- Gabar is back. It's a guy that hates Madden football. <laughs> and Welcome to Me. That's a Kristen Wiig movie. Gotcha. I'd like to see that movie. I've is heard good be, things yeah, about yeah. it. Uh, we've got Home Video Releases. Paddington. Guess mm. what this has on Rotten Tomatoes? 10%. 98%. It's really? supposed to be a very good movie. I had no I've idea. I've heard good things about it. Uh, the Wedding Ringer. Okay. This is the uh, Kevin Hart movie. Yep, Josh Gad. Josh Gad, yes. 28% on Rotten Tomatoes. No. Uh, the Boy Next Door. This is the J-Lo and Kristen Chenoweth movie. 18%. 11%. Oh, I was way we, too high. We've got The Gambler. This is the remake of the 74 film starring Mark Wahlberg. We've got oh, gosh. That, 39%. That, right? 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 That, yeah, that, 39%. Came, that came and went, 46. It? Close. Okay. Wow. Um, Inherent Vice. I, I would do uh, want to see it's that. It's a PTA movie. Yeah. Uh, Mommy, which is uh, all I have here is 2014 Canadian drama. Uh, <laughs> it's their one drama for the year. Yeah. Uh, Everly. This is a movie with Salma Hayek. Okay. Mm, yeah. A lot of movies on home release. Backstreet Boys. Show them what you're made of. 67% on Rotten Tomatoes. Flaccid penises. That's what they're made of. <laughs> uh, video games. We've got Broken Age uh, and uh, the... The end of Broken Age, part like two. Part two, yeah. Yeah, this was the kick, the first giant Kickstarter success, like uh, four million dollars on Kickstarter. For, Crowdsourcing, crowdfunding. For, um, yeah, for those guys. That's that's the story of this arc. Is crowdfunding. It is. <laughs> Magicka Wizard Wars. I don't know what that is. Next, uh, uh, Omega Content, <laughs> State of Decay, and Tropico Five. I think of that. What's the name of the character on SNL that says next? And he throws uh, the card. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I I like the reviewer. Guy. Winthrop I love, something, something. I love that guy. Say. By the way. Oh, he's great. He's married to Co- Kobe Smulders. I he know. Is. IRL. He is. That's why yeah, he was on How I Met Your Mother. Oh, oh. I thought that was my cue. <laughs> How I. Look out. Shane, you got a well oiled machine this year. It is my turn. Uh, my pick is a hit, and it will be a hit. It will be the biggest movie of the calendar year for 2015. Uh, of course, I'm no talking doubt. about Marvel's. Avengers 2, Age of Ultron, uh, sneak previews have already hit. People are saying it is dense, it is wacky. It's yeah, it's tra- and it's, it's tracking to do better than the first one. And it's so. good. They're saying Hawkeye has got key role and key lines in the movie. And key lime pie. And key lime pie it's that Adam got from worked in. the Florida Keys. This is going to be big. I cannot wait to see it. And then bring on Star Wars. Done. Under, under, right, right from May to December. May to December. It's like story of my relationships. Jared. 
Europe has a lot of films in between then and now. I've got minus five minutes to go. Okay. Max. <laughs> anyway, let's, talk, uh, let's do over every one of them. Let's do our, our rest of the year movie preview. <laughs> no, we'll do that next time. Our All next right. episode. All right. So, hey, if you guys want to talk about uh, your Toys R Us Pitch memories. Perfect 2. I'm looking at Blech. you, friend of the show, the great Luke Ski, out in California right now. I'm sure you have some Toys R Us memories you'd like to share. Did he work at Toys R Us? He did. In Wisconsin. Oh, it's terrible. So it was all cheese and then Packer uniforms. <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, comments at thescopeshow.com is the email. Voicemail 612-21-SCOPE. That's 612-217-2673. Or connect with us on social media, Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter. All those links are on our website at thescopeshow.com. Shane, if you'd like to support the show. I'm breathless. Patreon.com slash thescopeshow. You can pledge as little as a dollar an episode. Set a monthly cap. Cancel anytime. But you're not going to cancel because you love what we do and you want to support us. Get over there now. Patreon.com slash thescopeshow. Support the show. Or if you're buying on Amazon. The scope show. Amazon. <laughs> you're maybe gonna buy a co- console on Amazon. The scope show.com slash Amazon. There's a link there. It's our affiliate link. We get a chunk kickback. Adam's already he's out of frame. He's off the show. Yep. He's got <laughs> of course he's got <laughs> shorts <laughs> on. Uh, uh, a little bit helps the show. It doesn't cost you anymore. That uh, is how you do it. That is how you support the show. And this, this is, how- is how we do it. <laughs> Back to you, Shane. All right. Uh, what a great show. <laughs> uh, Adam, thanks for indulging us on our Toys R Us memory. Have a seat, Adam. We still got a show to finish here. Yeah. <laughs> Jared, about. you did a great job. Thank you. I did a superb job. This I've is my best thrice, of the three shows. Thrice we recon- recognized for my great job. If, if I don't see that on the Facebook group tonight, you I'm going to be angry you want at me you. in the photo or just the awards? Just the awards. Okay. Yeah, screw me. We don't need that. That's fair. All right. So, uh, guys, great job. Great to be back again. See you in three months. We'll see you in three months. For Jared Adam, I'm Shane. Bye for now. Ladies and gentlemen, we find ourselves once again at the end. I hope you've enjoyed our time together. I know I have. Fear not, Scope Faithful. Days shall pass as if they were but a moment. And Jared, Adam, and Shane will return with another thrilling episode. Until then, send your comments to comments at thescopeshow.com or leave a voicemail message by dialing... 612-217-2673. Thanks for listening, faithful fans. This is Tony Partington saying, Hasta luego. Tune in next time to another terrific edition of The Scope. Oh.